On Saturday, January 13th, 2018, at exactly 8.07 a.m., an emergency alert appeared on every phone across Hawaii. Ballistic missile threat inbound to Hawaii. Seek immediate shelter. This is not a drill. People ran desperately for cover, hid their children, and sent last messages to loved ones. Those who had found shelter had to anxiously wait for the bright flash and intense blast of an atomic bomb. But nothing. 38 tense minutes passed, and a second message was finally sent to everyone's phones. There is no missile threat or danger to the state of Hawaii. Repeat, false alarm. Shaken and confused, people emerged from their impromptu shelters and quickly wondered what exactly had just happened. It all turned out to be a terrible and avoidable error, culminating in a simple misclick of a button. Before the incident itself, the people of Hawaii already had legitimate reason to believe that a nuclear strike might be a reality. In 2017, the year before, tensions between the United States and North Korea had reached an all-time high. Kim Jong-un's isolated nation had been performing more and more weapons tests and even launched a missile that passed over northern Japan. But most worryingly, they also had been successfully detonating a series of nuclear bombs, which demonstrated to the world that North Korea's nuclear weapons capability was developing at a faster rate than anyone initially thought. At this point, North Korea was believed to be able to produce missiles capable of reaching Hawaii. If you're unlucky enough to be caught directly beneath an atomic bomb, you can expect, or perhaps unexpect, to be vaporized instantly, leaving behind an eerie shadow of carbon where you once stood. Those further out and not in cover would simply ignite, along with everything else in the vicinity. Those who are cocooned from the blast have potentially a worse fate to deal with, severe burns and radioactive poisoning from the fallout which, if in contact with the skin, can cause internal bleeding, vomiting, cancer, and death. We know this from eyewitness accounts of those caught in Hiroshima on August 6, 1945, and those caught three days later in Nagasaki on August 9. What survivors saw in the immediate aftermath of those atomic strikes are too horrific to share in this video, so I've linked a book below that I've been reading lately to mark the 75th anniversary of those devastating attacks that are believed to have killed an upward estimate of 226,000 people. So, to have to wait for an imminent nuclear strike, like those in Hawaii that day, would have been stressful to say the least. After the incident, a Reddit user began a thread asking people what they did in those 38 minutes. I started off trying to wake my roommates up to no avail. Then, in extreme denial, I walked outside my home to see if anyone else was hysterically preparing for a disaster. There were crowds of people running to their cars from the beach. The freeway was completely blocked. And yet, there were also elderly people who didn't get a notification, just watering their lawn as if nothing was happening. After the five minutes outside, which felt like an hour, I walked back to see my roommates awake, switching through channels and seeing a banner on every channel that warned us to seek shelter, stay on the floor and away from windows. Then I received a frantic call from my mum from California in tears saying how much she loved me and calling my dad and two sisters saying it could be the last time they might talk to me. My sister, 12, felt so rushed and said that she loved me but didn't know what else to say. I could hear my other sister, 6, saying, how could Ryan be dying? There's no way. At this point, my biggest fear was no longer dying. It was the thought of my family I'm leaving behind. I told them how I live in an area with low population and away from military bases and I should be fine with my water and food reserves. Mid-call, I receive an upcoming call from my uncle who lives on the island. I figured he had important news that was relevant, so I told my family I had to hang up. He told me it was a false alarm. I proceeded to tell everyone else. And that concluded my most stressful 30 minutes ever. Roughly 10 minutes after initial alert, Representative Tulsi Gabbard tweeted that it was a false alarm. Soon, other public figures and groups started to spread the news via Twitter, but it took a total of 38 minutes for everyone to receive a text clarifying that no nuclear strike would take place that day. An investigation into the incident concluded that it was a combination of human error and inadequate safeguards that contributed to the transmission of this false alert. It was the result of a drill that had started with some regularity last November, 
around the time Hawaii reinstated its Cold War era nuclear warning sirens amid growing fears of attack by North Korea. During the drill, the midnight shift supervisor played a recording over the phone that included the typical drill language, but also erroneously contained the text warning that a live ballistic missile was incoming. The recording does not follow the script contained in the standard operating procedure for this type of drill. Around 8.05 a.m., an employee initiated the internal test. From a drop-down menu on the computer program, he saw two options, test missile alert and missile alert. He was supposed to choose the former. He erroneously chose the latter, an initiation of a real-life missile alert. The employee who was responsible had been working for the emergency management agency for 10 years, but had allegedly confused real-life events and drills at least two times before. He was initially assigned to another position, but was eventually fired from his job. Since the incident, the unnamed employee who made the mistake has received most of the blame, and sadly, numerous death threats have forced him to live in anonymity, despite having publicly expressed his deepest apologies. The 2018 false missile alert over Hawaii has got to be one of the worst false alarms in recent times. And despite the shock and panic that occurred that day, things would turn to normal pretty quickly afterwards. For the time being, 75 years have passed without nuclear attack. Let's aim to keep it that way. Hey, thanks for watching. Links are as always down in the description below. It's been great to see some new faces to the channel and I really appreciate so much positive feedback to my content. So if you're new, consider subscribing to the channel. I aim to get a video out every Friday. Until then, goodbye.